There are a lot of bad things that we see on the news every day, and we can't help but ask, why does God allow these things to happen? Why does God allow innocent people to suffer? We see the existence of evil, and because of this, some people even dismiss the existence of God. We would hear them say things like, a good God will not allow these evil things to happen. But for us to know that evil exists, we have to know that good exists. That leads us to having knowledge of right and wrong and the existence of a moral law. So who gave that law? God did. Because we know that there is evil, we know that God exists. This message is addressed to anyone if you're going through any doubts and a hard season in your life. And it will really be helpful for you to stick till the end so you'll get the whole picture. So stay tuned. Hello friends and family, I'm Hannah of Hope and Future and this channel encourages this generation to take in the word and live it out in today's culture. And if that's what you're looking for, consider subscribing. So let's go back to the question, why does God allow innocent people to suffer? One is that we have free will. Even if God has the power to make us like robots, we just follow everything he says, he didn't do that. He gave us free will so we could willingly choose to love God and fulfill his purpose in our lives. He made us in his image, according to Genesis 1.27. Just like Adam and Eve, they were given the choice to obey him. They could eat from every fruit in the Garden of Eden except for one. They disobeyed that one rule that God gave them. They sinned and all of us inherited that sinful nature. So now now, well, though majority of us will not choose to do really bad things, there are some who would choose to steal, to hurt people, to shoot someone. They choose to do that and it causes pain, anger, regret, and all the negative things. But also, even if we don't go that extreme, all of our actions that we choose have consequences, and they could either be for the good or for the bad. Next is our vision is limited. God's perspective is higher than ours. When we were little, our parents would bring us to the doctor so that we could get some shots. And the doctor would stick out a needle, draw our blood, and we would be scared. And even if it hurt, our parents let us go through that. Why? so we could have a stronger immunity. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We don't see the full picture. We only know what's in the past and in the present, but we don't know the future. God knows everything and he knows our future. He created everything. Will we know God's purpose for allowing all bad events that happened? Most probably not, but God has a purpose and we can be comforted knowing that God is good and that he keeps his promises. In our limited capacity we have as humans, we can trust in God who is omniscient. We are halfway through the video and if this has helped you so far, smash the like button as it helps this message go out to more people. I appreciate you. Next is that God wants us to learn through trial and testing. When everything is okay, we don't see the need for God. Sometimes we become our own God, but when we are faced Faced with uncertainty and conflict, that's when we draw near to Him. Think about when the pandemic was going on. A lot of people suddenly became fearful for their lives and they saw the reality that they could die anytime, which was always true, but fear was heightened during that time. But also sometimes the biggest lessons we can learn are through hardships. I could attest to that. I thought I had faith in God as a pastor's kid who followed after the pastor dad. But during my cancer journey, I realized that I still wanted to be in control of my life. And so I learned how to give everything to God. James 1 verses 2 and 3 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. In the suffering, know that it's not in vain. Your character is refined and you gain wisdom. And here's another thing, there is a hopeful end. With a lot of bad things that have been going on, especially killings, diseases, or natural calamities, these are the things that either push people away from God or they bring them toward Him. I've tried the first one before and it's hopeless. So I went back to the latter. And because of that, I became a stronger believer. When children's lives are taken away, we can be assured that they are with God in heaven. In Deuteronomy 1 verse 39, the children were able to enter the promised land because they were in the age of innocence. And until now, we can be assured of that, that children whose lives are taken away are with God in 
heaven. And one day when our time comes, we will be reunited with them. Right now, we are in the world which is Satan's territory, according to 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4. It's cursed land. And as long as Jesus has not returned yet, these events will continue to happen. But for the believer, there is hope of restoration. There are many verses in the Bible that talk about his kingdom, one that will not be destroyed. There will be the highway of holiness where no evil thing can enter. Satan will be bound. We will see these things happen. So what do we do now while the Lord has not returned yet? Continue to endure, spread the love of God to as many people as possible, and trust in God's word. I had first-hand experience almost losing my life, and I also gave up on my faith. But by God's grace, I held on and I'm here. And if you want to hear the full story, you can watch that video here. Our hope and future is in Jesus. See you in the next one.